The popular conception of Down syndrome was of uh, somebody with a terrible disease who would have been better not to be born. And I thought it would be uh, the advent of this new test gave an opportunity to stand up and give some people courage and go, you know, it's really, yeah, there are, there are extra challenges and not putting a bow on it. It is, it is harder and it is a different life. But, uh, you know, it's harder to run a marathon than to walk to the pie shop. There's also great, great rewards and uh, my life has been enormously enriched. But if you were uh, honest, you mm. sort of hoped that somebody else was going to make it, didn't you? It wasn't yeah, I didn't something yeah, I didn't want to do, to do it at all. I kept saying to... Uh, you know, people who make panorama-type documentaries. You know, there's a really important documentary to be made, and I would shove figures under their noses going, look at the calculations about this new test. They are not counting. They are counting a Down syndrome life as being worth one-seventh of a life of a typical baby. They're saying this is an overall health benefit, which is actually an increase in terminations. And, and, and I was going, this says that this is a, a really good moment to hold a mirror up to society and say, look, you know, look what we value. Look, we're, we're spending a, all the money, pretty much all the money, we're spending researching Down syndrome. We spent not researching uh, how to improve their medical uh, conditions or how to integrate them better in school. We're spending it on detecting them before birth. Mm. And that the, this this money doesn't benefit the Down syndrome community in any way. Let's you know let's have let's have a debate. That's all I wanted to do, and I'm really happy to be here because it means the debate is the debate has begun. Happening. It has yeah. begun. But even from that first moment in Ollie's life, and he was ten days old when you yeah. were told, and the way the manner in which you were told, yeah, the doctor came in as sort of uh, this yeah. terrible news. This kind of yeah. Well, so I mean, I don't blame him me. at all because I think you know that that at the time was the story, wasn't it? That's what doctors are, are taught in medical school to believe and, and families are shocked um, when they receive the news. And actually, you know, the, the midwife, well, she was a nurse, actually, the nurse that cried, um, at the time I thought, what a wonderful, empathetic human being. And I did think, gosh, it must be tough to be a neonatal intensive care nurse mm. and to see that all the time. But the truth of the matter is that the most recent up-to-date research on large numbers of families shows that 99% of people with Down syndrome are happy with their lives. 97% of families love their family member with Down syndrome. Only a you know, very small number are unhappy. And 86% um, of people with Down syndrome say they make friends easily. You know, siblings are, are um, the only difference between uh, siblings of people with Down syndrome and a typical group of siblings is that they're slightly more likely to go into the caring professions. So they're slightly more likely to be useful to society. So yeah. I just want to, I'm not telling anyone what to do and I'm not saying, you know, I certainly am not an American style pro-lifer, but I I'm just, just want to stand up for the people who haven't yet been heard yeah. and say, you know, for them this test is Bad news. But you also say that, you, in your travels, and you travel the world um, yeah. uh, looking at this, that there are certainly a very large proportion of women who have been corralled into yeah. terminating yes. the baby. And for me, I, I find that the most tragic thing of all, really, that um, I think, uh, you know, the thing about privilege is it blinds you to your own ignorance. And so uh, if you're in a... There is a, a bias against... Uh, Down syndrome and most people are not even aware that they have it and so there is explicit pressure to terminate which might come from someone saying I've booked you in for a termination in the morning or these are all direct quotes by the way from women in hospitals and not and recently um, stop this nonsense now you know your marriage will uh, your marriage will end if you have this baby um, they put a great strain on the NHS, you know, these are all direct quotes. Wow. And, and then there is the hidden, which is much more common, the hidden pressure, which is, I'd terminate if I were you. Um, do you really think you could cope with a child with Down syndrome? You tell me. That is actually, that's actually guiding, that's actually directed, isn't it? And, um, yeah, but I mean, it just did, goes on. People did ask you. I mean, it's a, yeah. it's a hell of a thing to ask someone, but people did say to you, almost with an element of sort of sympathy, well, did you know? Were well, you I aware? Mind. I mean, did you know is a kind of horrible thing to say because they're bringing into the question, should your child exist when he's just on the swings next to you? Mm. But the, the question I really find very difficult to deal with, but I'm used to it now, mm. is didn't you know? As in, if you had known... If you had known, you would obviously have terminated. And I think 
what's happened is that we have, without noticing it, switched from being a society where uh, the assumption is you won't terminate mm. for Down syndrome or that, or that you, you, you know, you'd keep your baby to the assumption being that you ought to have. Mm. So I think far from being an improvement for women, this test is actually catching women in a guilt trap where you are guilty if you don't do the test and you don't find mm. out uh, and you then have a child with Down syndrome and impose that child on uh, the national purse mm. is the way some people see it. And you are guilty then if you do terminate, you have to live with that. And that's re I mean, no one's saying that anyone terminates lightly. It's, I mean, I, I am so grateful that I was never put in that position. For more of the same, just click here. And don't forget, you can subscribe for even more of these amazing videos exclusive to our channel. But nobody said, you know, yes, safe sex is important, but actually you need to know the facts about when your body's at its prime, when mm. it's at its optimum age to recreate. You well, know, the only thing they teach us is how not to get pregnant. Exactly. <laughs> That's and what you, spend, you do, you spend your whole life. You know, going, I don't want to get I pregnant. I know, and you spend your entire life, and I still was into my early 30s, oh, I can't get pregnant, I can't get pregnant. And then one day you suddenly go, gosh, I really want children. 